very special guest who just so happens to be the first actress in a wheelchair to be on a kids television network in Nickelodeon history. Please welcome Miracle Palayo. Hey, Julia, what's up? How are you? I'm good, how are you? Good, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Let's talk about how we met first. We were just mutual Instagram followers, right? Yes. And then mm -hmm. we came to each other at the Kids' Choice Sports Awards. That was so much fun. I know. It, it's so funny because, like, because I, I heard someone call it, say Miracle, and I, was, and I turned around, and sure enough, it was you. You were like, oh, hi, I'm Julia from Instagram. I'm like, oh, hi. Let's just get right into it. You've acted on screen, on stage, you've modeled, you're a spokesperson. What don't you do? <laughs> How did you get started? I've always loved the camera ever since I was a little girl. When I was four, my dad would always videotape me on our home video camera. And he would say, Miracles on TV, Miracles on TV. And I literally thought I had my own TV show. Like I would get in front of the mirror and I would be like, it's the Miracle Show. And, oh, um, and then from there, um, when I was 12, on my 12th birthday, my parents took me to go see the Miracle Worker, the, the play. And um, I noticed that the girl that was playing Helen Keller was able-bodied. So she was a uh, able-bodied actor playing a disabled character. And I turned to my dad and I said, Dad, I wouldn't do that, but I want to show people that whether I'm in my wheelchair or if I'm in my walker, I can make this happen. You know, and I want to be a voice for people that are that have a disability who don't believe in themselves enough to follow their dreams and so i started with theater and um so i started at theater at 14 and so i did it i did theater from junior high until high school but in between that time i was a part of a performing arts group called kids on stage for a better world that was directed and choreographed by grounded for life's lindsay bartleson and so in CC Kids, I was the only member that was in a wheelchair. And, you know, we would sing, we would, I would do the hand movements when they would dance. And we would also do acting. So it was like a triple threat group that really got me into the love of performing. And so when I took my final bow in CC Kids in 2009, I had already did 30 shows with them. And then when I took my final bow in 2009, I continued um, theater in, in high school. So I was in theater all my four years of high school. And then when I graduated, I got a uh, theatrical pin that I actually put, I don't, I'm not wearing it right now, but like I have a pin that I, I would always put on my shirt. Mm -hmm. um, and so after that, I got represented with an agency for actors with disabilities. And then um, in 2015, I did my first, uh, co-star role with Alan Tudyk from from movies like Knocked Up, Frozen, Wreck-It Ralph, and the the web series was called Con Man, and it also starred Nathan Fillion from Firefly and Felicia Day, and then from there I did Nickelodeon's Bella and the Bulldogs. That's where I became the first actress in the wheelchair to be on Nickelodeon. Wow, that is unbelievable. So what are you Thank up for? Um, well, nothing too much since quarantine happened. I've just been, you know, working with my acting coach, who's also my best friend as well. So like we'll, we'll coach once a week. And then what we worked on in class one on one, we'll actually put on tape for casting directors and then my manager will send those tapes out to casting. So we'll actually treat the, the performance clip like an actual audition, like with my setup. So like it can look like a professional video. So like that's what I've been doing since quarantine happened. It just constantly working on my craft for when I do go back in person to do auditions again. That's great. So you're obviously taking advantage of this time. In between that time, I've also written like two monologues, one drama, one comedy. Uh -huh. So like um, it was actually an idea that my that my acting coach, who's all um, her name's Kelly Hire, she was on. Nickelodeon as well and Lifetime movies and stuff like that. So she, so she's really starting to stretch me. Uh, so I wrote for the first time ever. I wrote two monologues, one drama, one comedy. So how has quarantine been for you? What have you been keeping yourself busy with besides writing and acting? 
nothing too much, just, you know, spending a lot of time with friends and family. Um, I, I recently became a godmother this year. Oh, so thank you. And then my, my fourth niece was born in March. Aww. So she's seven months now and just spending a lot of time with uh, family and just trying to stay busy as best as I could because, you know, what else can you do? So working on anything when quarantine started in March? Um, nothing too much recently. Like it was just a lot of auditions. And then um, when quarantine happened, I had to get all of my equipment for self tapes. So, I mean, that it just happened out of the blue. I mean, well, it was kind of interesting because I was going to do a project for Disney Plus, but for some reason, it just didn't end up working out. And that was the last project that I was going to do before quarantine happened. What are some of the hardships and challenges you faced as an actor with a disability? People with disabilities, they don't really get the opportunity to audition as much as um, an able-bodied actor like yourself. So it can be even more nerve-wracking to be in the room. So that's why my agent, Gail Williamson, is, al is always saying, you know, it is, it's always important to train, but for a person with a disability, they need to be bigger and better than anybody else in the room because we don't get that opportunity to audition as much. And then also too, you know, like, it's just, you know, making sure that, you know, the places that I go to are wheelchair accessible, you know, um, you know, just things like that. And, you know, just making sure that everybody understands that I have every right to chase this dream just like everybody else does. Have you faced discrimination? Sometimes in auditions, you know, like, I'll get stared at, you know? Um, uh, we've, my mom and I, we've dealt with, you know, stage moms, unfortunately. Um, but I'm just like, you know what? Let's, I'm just gonna smile and say, you know, I have every right to be here just like everybody else. And I'm chasing the stream just like everybody else is. There's room for everybody. That's what some people mm -hmm. forget. There's room for everybody, no matter what your ability or what your dream is. 2020 has been quite the wild ride. How have you been trying to better yourself and challenge yourself during these times? Well, I'm definitely um, not taking any moment for granted. You know, I'm just grateful for the times that, you know, we can go out and, you know, spend time with people as best as we could, you know. I mean, it's just, it's crazy how, you know, you can't even go into a restaurant without having a reservation. You know, I never, I never experienced this in my lifetime whatsoever. I mean, I'm, one thing I do miss though is I miss hugging people. Yeah. Like there's nothing there. I mean, don't get me wrong, like FaceTime and FaceTime and Zoom is great, but I miss that, that like connection of just like being with people actually face to face and just embracing them. Like that's what I miss the most. What have you learned from this year? Like you're talking about not taking things for granted, but have you had some like eye-opening experiences? Um, well, just like I said, you know, I'm, I'm trying to appreciate, you know, the little things just like, go, like I said, you know, being able to go out to eat or, you know, I'm, I'm forever grateful for the times that I, I, we never wore a mask, you know, or like just little, you know, I'm like, I, I kept thinking, God, why, why can't we go back to the time where we didn't have to wear a mask, you know, I miss being able to, to, to breathe without a mask, you know, and just little things like that. Mm -hmm. um, just not, I, I miss life the way it was before. Because mm -hmm. um, everything was like, not, not so easy, but it wasn't as difficult. I even miss going to the movies, you know, I never expected any of this to happen. You know, I missed, you know, going to, you know, just the normal things that we used to do, you know, like hang out, go, go, go to your friend's house or, you know, go on a vacation, you know, like without being restricted, you know, I miss everything that it, it used to be. Yeah. I mean, who could have imagined this would happen? Like it's, it's, it's wild. A lot of people, especially artists are starting to talk more about mental health. You have to have such thick skin as an actor, as you know, how do you go about taking care of your mental health? 
I, you know, especially in this industry, you know, you can't let every little thing get to you. There is a lot of rejection and you're just going to, you know, like, like you said, you know, you do have to develop thick skin and you, know, you can't overwork yourself when you don't get a job or, you know, like when a project that you wanted so badly doesn't work out, you know, you can't let it consume you, you know, you have to get used to hearing the word no. And so like when it comes to your mental health, you know, you're just, you just have to tell yourself, you know, like it's okay. You know, you just don't overwork yourself. You have things that you like to do like journaling or. Listening. Yeah, I journal, I journal and I also pray a lot. So um, like I always pray before I go into an audition. So like that, that really calms me down and I'm, and I'm just like, you know what? I am here to fulfill a purpose and that's to be a voice for the disabled um, in the performing arts. I can't let negativity or stress consume me when it comes to this industry because you do, like, like I said, you know, you do have to get used to hearing the word no. You do have to get used to, um, you know, getting a call back and then not booking it. You know, you just have to get used to a lot. I'm always telling people, if you want to do this industry, you have to be prepared for the unexpected. Mm -hmm. I feel like if we let all of the frustration and stress consume us, then what's the point? You know? Like, yeah. Remember the why of, of, of why you're doing it to begin with or else you're just going to yeah. do it. Maybe. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of, a lot of people in the industry, you know, like they're not looking at the why they're looking at the, how can I do this to get here? How can I, how can I be bigger than, you know, Ariana Grande, you know, or something like that, you know, like they're thinking of like, what could I do to get here instead of like this, this journey and this industry, you know, you're, you're on a ladder, you know, it's going to take time until you get to here, but you have to go through the lows to get to the highs. What is your why? I'm embarking on this journey because I feel like it's what God wanted me to do because he told um, I remember Jesus telling me, you know, you're going to be a voice for kids in wheelchairs and, and other disabilities. And so, um, I feel like he gave me this talent to kind of like bring people back to him in a way through the arts. And so I, I just want to be a voice for anybody with a disability that wants to change their dream, no matter what it is. And so I just want to show people that whether you're standing up, whether you're standing or you're sitting, you can make your dream happen. And so I feel like um, the reason why I got in, I, I feel like this was my, this was my calling is because um, I just feel like it's where I'm meant to be, to be a voice. Are there people that you look up to? That I look up to? Um, definitely Meryl Streep and um, Demi Lovato. Uh, Anne Hathaway, you know, all, all of the greats, you know, like, I feel like they've showed me that no matter what dream you have, it's going to be hard, but in the end, it's going to be totally worth it. So what have been some of your kind of pinch me moments that have made all of the struggle and all of the hard work worth it? Um, I think just knowing that I'm one step, I'm one step closer to really getting my name out there. It just, it makes all the, all the sleepless nights and all the times I've cried and I'd be like, I want this so bad, but, you know, I think just like for Bella and the Bulldogs, when my agent told me that I was going to become the first actress in the wheelchair to be on a kid's television network, that for me was like the spark to, to keep going because shortly after that episode aired, I got so many messages from kids all over the world, including their parents saying that thank you for being a role model for my daughter who has spinal bifida or for my son who's who's autistic um you know like they, they were saying you know thank you for showing us as parents that you know they have the, the potential to make to do whatever they want to do in life so like for me that that is also another reason why I'm doing this wow that is incredible I'm sure you already inspire so many people. If you could give your 18 year old self advice, what would you say? Just enjoy every moment that every day has to give and just take 
you know, your opportunities one 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 door opening at a time. You know, it's not it's not going to happen overnight. You know, just you know, be in the moment. You know, when when these opportunities happen. You know, just and you know, grow for grow from them as well. You know, like it's going to be like I said. You know, there's going to be rejection. So you have not don't beat yourself up. Just because it didn't happen the way that you wanted it to be, let it be a learning experience. Like for me, um, when I hear the word no, I'm like, okay, you know, it's a, it's okay. Like I'm not, I'm not gonna be down in the dumps about it. You know, I'm just gonna be like, okay, what could, what could I learn from that experience to grow and make myself better? You know, when I got, huh? Uh, I was gonna say. One of my favorite quotes is a setback is only a set up for what's to come. And I think it's so true. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's hard though. It's hard to remember that when we want something so badly and it doesn't work out. And yeah. The end of the world, but it's just, I don't know. I just think everything happens for a reason when it comes to this, you know, this journey. I have a question for you. So like what, what has been your biggest struggle in the, in my, well, in the industry and, you know, what pushes you to keep going? My biggest struggle? Yeah. And like, what pushes you to keep going? Honestly, getting in my own way, which I feel like we mm -hmm. all relate to. Because when I'm mm -hmm. about not being where I want to be, it comes down to like, I am the only person getting in my own way to an extent, you know? And I mean, obviously there's like so many challenges, but I feel like the ball really is in our court and there's so many things that we can be doing to better ourselves that we don't need anyone else's permission. Like no one has to tell you to go pick up a script and to read a new story, to go work on your accents, to, you know what I mean? To like better yourself. You don't need mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. permission or just creating in general. I think yeah. social media is such an incredible platform to create without anyone else's mm -hmm. approval mm -hmm. or, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, that has been my biggest struggle is just wanting other people's not only approval, but their excitement about what I'm doing. But at the end of the day, right. from you just wanting to share your creativity and to share your art. And what keeps me going is kind of the same thing that you said, just wanting to inspire other people and wanting to mm -hmm. make yourself proud and just wanting to grow within the art to learn everything that I can about being an actor and a performer and just telling stories and affecting people like I've been affected by storytelling, you know? Right. And I feel like, you know, in this industry, especially, you know, it teaches you a lot about patience. Yes. It, you, you, you really have to learn how to be patient. I mean, because I'll be honest, I am the most impatient person ever. But yeah. like, there's something about, especially being being an actor, where you, it it does teach you how to be patient. I mean, because I could be like, and I know I know that you've gone through this too. But I I could be sitting here and then I'll get an email saying I have an audition. So I'm like, okay, I have to get the script. I have to have a coaching session. And I have to get the tape in. You know, and then you know, my parents, you know, they have to set up everything, you know, for, for a tape. And so like, you know, they, they, they have to do it with me. And so I also feel like it is extremely important to have an amazing support system yes. to be by your side, your family, they have to go on this journey of this dream with you and they have to support, they have to back it up 1000%. Yes, absolutely. So what would you tell other people wanting to chase this dream or just chase any dream? Um, one, you have to make sure that you love it. Mm. Two, you, you have to, I think it's really important to set goals for yourself. And um, I just feel like, you know, if you have a passion, just chase after it, no matter what it is, you know, whether it's being a writer or, wanting to become a doctor if it's what you're calling it's if it's what you're called to do then who's stopping you the only person that you know you can bring down is yourself Absolutely. so just 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 go for it 
and enjoy every single moment of it. We were just talking about patience. And this is something that I have been learning, especially the past few months in quarantine. But I think there's a difference between um, wanting it so badly and not being where you are, so not really doing anything about it and just kind of sulking and being frustrated. And yeah. maybe the opportunity hasn't come yet, but you're working your butt off every day with, with what you have, you know? Exactly, exactly. And so, like, you know, like, when people, when people tell me, like, when people tell me, you know, oh, I want to be an actress, too, like, how do I get started? I'm like, um, are you sure that you're ready for, like, the work ethic that goes, that goes with it? You know, are you emotionally ready for the rejection? You know, are you mentally prepared for the long hours on set? You know, it's just not, like, one take and then go home. It's, one take after another after another after another and so they're like oh wow never mind you know it, when I have to tell them what goes on behind the scenes they're like wow you know well, when you, um, you are on big shows or who are like the acting legends you don't you don't know their entire journey you know because like you've experienced every audition and every job teaches you so much and makes you better and makes you stronger yeah Right, exactly. You know, like, I'm sure Anne Hathaway, before she got started, she worked in a nine-to-five job, you know, just like everybody else, you know, like, you know, no matter what she was doing before, or I don't, I don't know what Meryl Streep was doing before, you know, she got Oscars and um, Emmys and stuff like that, but I feel like there has to be a backstory before the big, the big picture, you know? If someone comes to you and says, I want to be an actress, I want to be an actor, what, what would you say back to them? You have to train the, your, your mental and your emotional muscle, for sure. You know, it's just, like I said, it's not going to happen overnight. You know, you have to take acting classes, you know, you have to go on auditions. And, you know, I had an acting teacher that says, that would say, your job is to audition, you know, it's not just go in the room and perform, you know, like you have to book the room in, in order for you to like book the job, you know? And so um, my advice for anybody that wants to get in the industry is you have to love what you have to do and you have to mentally and emotionally prepare yourself for, for every single step of this journey because it's not going to be easy. Mm -hmm. What are some of the biggest lessons that, acting and growing up in this industry is have taught you? Well, like I said, you know, it's definitely taught me to be patient and um, it's, it's, I also feel like it's made me grow up very fast in a way. I, I don't really know how to explain that, but I just feel like it's made me grow up very fast and it's helped me learn how to, how to talk to people. You know, I mean, I, I'm very social, but like when it comes to, you know, actually like talking to people, I, I used to be like, you know, very shy and stuff like that. I mean, I would always be like outgoing, but like when it, when it came to talking to people, I would be like, oh, okay, you know, um, I just feel like it's helped me interact with people more. And so it's helped me like, you know, make eye contact even more, you know, or it's also helped me really really listen to people yeah, i was just gonna say i've become a, such a better listener just from having to listen in scenes it really mm -hmm. yeah, does help you listen mm -hmm. what are some of your big goals and dreams for the future um my one of my biggest goals is to de i really want to be a part of a christian film something like you know, I can only imagine, or I still believe, or even Miracles from Heaven, you know, that movie with Jennifer Gardner and Queen Latifah, I would really love to be a part of something like that, and also, um, I also feel like it's really on my heart to write a book, you know, about, uh, write a book about, you know, my experience in this industry, and, you know, you know, how people call me, you know, a role model, and um, I just want to, I just want to, I want to, I want to show people that, you know, you can grow as a person no matter what, no matter what kind of dream that you chase. And so I feel like, you know, I, those are the two things I want to do. I want, I want to write a book and I just want, I want to, I want to be a part of a project that has a huge 
meaning of the reason why I'm doing what I what I love to do. Yeah. And so I just I want and so I also just want people to know my story. And so I just those are the three goals that I have. I want people to know my story. Um, you know, like I said, write a book and I just want to be a, a part of a project then that could help me do all of that. And I also really would love to like be a part of a voiceover children series. And so I would really love to do something like that, you know, maybe for Nick Jr. or Sprout, you know, just, just to do something, you know, fun for kids because, you know, I have, I have two nieces that are, that are set, well, one niece is seven and then my youngest niece is seven. No, my, my, my niece Olivia, she's seven. And then my niece Aviana is seven months. And so, and then my goddaughter Presley is two months old. So I want to do a project that they can relate to. And also I want them to also learn about disability. And so I would really love to play a character in a voiceover series that's in a wheelchair or in a walker. So I can educate, you know, little ones about chasing your dreams and also educating them, also educating them about disability because, you know, a lot of kids, the, one of the main things I get asked a lot is, oh, what happened? You know, because like when kids see my wheelchair, they, they don't really understand, you know, this is, this is a disability. You know, I'm in, I'm in this wheelchair because I can't really use my legs very well. And so I just want to um, just be a part of something where I can help them understand in their own way, you know. So have you ever had moments where you felt like giving up? And I'm assuming you did because we all have those moments. But what? Yeah, of course. Of course. You know, I've, I've cried to my parents and I'll be like, when is it going to happen? You know, because, you know, like I said in the beginning, you know, in this industry, it's hard. It really, really is hard. But for an actor with, dis with a disability, you have to work 10 times harder because you don't really see some, I mean, everybody's getting educated now and you know you are seeing people that are that are in a bt or that are deaf on on um television networks like you know glee and you know speechless you know you are seeing people in those type of shows but you know at the end of the day you know it's it's very very rare for those opportunities to happen so i feel like you know when I have those moments of like getting frustrated and I'm just like, I'm so close that I can taste it, but then something else happens. It's like, like, why? You know, I just, I just want to do this dream and I want to fill it with a purpose. So I feel like those whys are pushing me to get a guess. And so, and I also feel like hearing the word no makes me want to push harder to get a guess. Mm -hmm. Every no is just one step closer to the yes. Yeah. So true. Um, is there anything else that you would like to share with, with the world? <laughs> just be you, be you in, every, in every single way possible, no, ma no matter who tells, you, who tells you who you're supposed to be. Just be you because... An, ori an original is so much better than a copy. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for doing this miracle. You're welcome. I can't wait to read your book and watch you on the big screen. 